Mess Express. I'm Shani. And I am Frankie. And we're bringing this crazy train full steam ahead for your listening enjoyment. So, Frankie, what's been going on this week? Wow, it stopped raining. <laughs> for a second. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> they're expecting some more rain, but I don't think it's going to be like it was. So, hopefully, we can get the ground dried out. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, what about you? Did you have a good week? I did, I did. I've had a little bit going on. It's been crazy busy at work, of course, during the daytime with all the the calls with the storms. We've had quite a few lightning claims, lots and lots of lightning fires, which I saw on the news the other day. There was lots of structure fires from the lightning. So Yeah, it was like three in one, one like yeah. morning time period. It's definitely been something crazy. Even though we haven't had hurricanes, we're having craziness from the storms you know i heard a theory on the storms is that you know typically like uh, above south america and south america there's usually a, a rainy season mm-hmm. and so someone said that we uh, are getting their rainy season that 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 system moved north uh and so we're getting their rainy season so that's why we've gotten a year's worth of rain in seven months <laughs> yeah. isn't that crazy it's the craziest thing we got five months left yeah, hey. yeah, and, and so in July, I looked, it's double the rainfall that we normally do mm-hmm. in July. That was just amazing to me when I saw it on the news the other day. I was like, whoa, I knew we'd had a lot, but I didn't realize it was that much. Yeah, yeah, well, I had a house inspection on one of the homes I'm selling, and, and the buyers came back and said, you know, the crawl space is, is wet. And, and, and I, I told them and, and their agent, you know, that, hey, look, we have had, you know, and I sent them, like, clippings and articles, and it says, it's going to be wetter than than, than yeah. normal, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Anything in the news catch your eye this week? Yeah, you know, last week we talked about uh, bacteria levels being uh, high in Myrtle Beach, and I guess maybe that jinxed us a little bit because uh, a report came out this week that the uh, th- that Wrightsville Beach has elevated levels of bacteria, and there were swim warnings issued. So. Um, Looking at portcitydaily.com, they talk about uh, there was a strain of bacteria that's associated with fecal waste, uh, and that is in the Banks Channel area of Wrightsville Beach, so uh, not actually on the ocean. The ocean uh, tested all green, but the, um, the the alerts came from the, the channel side of it, and, and that's kind of where uh, I would go snorkeling, or mm-hmm. if you're at the south end, it's more calm to go over there and you could go and play and so probably I, I'm, I'm, I don't know but my, my guess would be it's probably from all the rain that we've have had and I did see that a couple of the uh, sewage pump um, stations had overflowed uh, particularly burnt meal the burnt meal one so I, I'm, I'm probably certain that, that that's where the, the increase in the bacteria is coming from oh yeah so just keep your eye on it if you're you know over there swimming near the the channel just make sure that you, you go and you see that those levels have come down and, and it looks like the levels were twice as high as, as the state allows oh wow yeah so definitely up there I was uh, up there maybe two weeks ago and uh, you could just tell that the there was rain and rain puddles that were you know, it just wasn't normal. I wasn't at the south end; I was up you know, at the north end, and and the rain had really done a lot of damage, and the ocean was rough. So, um, yeah, just just uh, be careful if you go in there. Make sure that those levels have come down. Yeah, I've actually um, seen a few articles that say that you know you think that you may get that through your mouth or what have you, but they say that the majority of the way people get sick from it is by the water going up their nose and it getting into their system that way. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, Especially, I guess, children are more likely, more susceptible. You know, I imagine their, maybe their immune system, first of all, isn't quite as strong as an adult, but they probably do a lot more jumping and hopping and skipping and going under and things like that to where they're getting more of that water up their nose and then it gets into their body somehow more so than if it were to get in their mouth. Um, So I thought that was kind of interesting when I read it, but I've seen it in several different places. Yeah, but but, you know, you probably also don't want to be eating fish in there either. Yeah, absolutely. Or if you do, you want to make sure that Mm. that it's cooked. But I I would be a little wary of you know, uh, catching fish and, and, and then plus you think about it, if you are catching fish or if you're fishing in it, 
you're still getting the water on your hands. Mm -hmm. And, and we've, we've had sort of a problem with um, Gen X here in the area. I know a lot of times up in our area, I'll notice in the waterways that the um, Department of Health and Natural Resources has put up signs saying, you know, you don't want to fish or get your shellfish or, you know, your oysters and such from that area at that time because of high bacteria levels. So, yeah, you definitely do not want to eat the fish or anything in any of those areas that they are telling you have that. Mm -hmm. did, did you hear anything about Gen X? Well, I'm sure you have. I have, but not lately, other than seeing that they had that little, um, they did have a meeting on it downtown. Um, I didn't catch, but just a few minutes of it on the news, so I'm not real sure a whole lot of what they said on it, but I know they did have some sort of a meeting, a town meeting, so to say, for people to come out and the public to be able to join in and to discuss the Gen X. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you're not familiar with what we're talking about with Gen X, we're not talking about Generation X folks, we are talking about um, there's a chemical that has been put in there by a um, company called Chemours, and that's C-H-E-M-O-U-R-S. And um, uh, when you type in Gen X, Wilmington, North Carolina, you will see uh, actually the first ad that pops up is Gen X in the Cape Fear River, and that is see what actions we are taking by Chemours. But uh, so it's this chemical that's produced by Kimors. I don't, I'm not sure exactly what even that company does, but there has just been um, uh, huge problems where not that anyone's sick or, or whatever, but once it was discovered, you know, they've said, hey, you're putting too much of it in there, and they've continually put more in there. So it's it's been a pretty big deal. It's a, a fluorochemical that I'm reading here. And um, I'm not sure the, the effects on it, but you know, you're putting these chemicals in there that you don't expect to be in there and that you're not known. And kind of the crazy part to me is, you know, here we buy our drinking water from um, uh, the Cape Fear Public Utility Authority. And so we're paying them for this tainted, tainted water. water. Absolutely. <laughs> And, and as I, I think that's kind of that's kind of crazy. And you know, uh, I know that when they first talking about start talking about the Gen X, they they were saying that you know you need to have reverse osmosis systems, and and um, you know the Cape Fear Public Utility Authority doesn't have the um, capability to you know um, do reverse osmosis on all of the drinking water. So to me, it's it's just really really crazy that that the water that we have been getting and drinking and bathing in that there's still these chemicals in it and, and there's, you know, uh, an, an acceptable level that, that they will allow them to put in it and, and that we're, you know, exceeding. I'm not sure if they've corrected that or not, but that to me that's just kind of crazy that you're paying for water that is known to be, Absolutely. be bad. So. And I think they don't really know a whole lot of the long-term effects either, so who knows what could it, you know, it could cause in years from now. Um, especially people who have babies and they're using that to mix the formula for the bottles or, you know, anything like that, yeah, things yeah. like that. And I've thought, I've even thought about my pets, you know, you give them water out the spigot and you're like, oh, is that something that's going to affect them? I mean, because I'm, I'm, I'm the crazy dog mom, so I think about that, you know. <laughs> yeah, but that's exactly what I was going to say. And, you know, this company is not here in Wilmington. It's up, you know... Um, near the Bladen Cumberland County line on uh, upstream on the Cape Fear River. So it's, it's, but it's being found, you know, all the way down here. So, I mean, there's a, a ton of people that, that have, could have been affected by all of this. And, and actually, you know, as I Google it, you know, like one of the things on the page is, you know, have you, uh, um, is an attorney ad. So, you, you know, I'm sure that there are lawsuits that, that are going on, you know, or, or will be going on, you know, from it. But, but it, to me, it's just kind of crazy that, that it's taken, taken so long for, you know, it, it to get knocked down. But It just amazes me that any level of something, a chemical that could cause any harm is acceptable to them. <laughs> and that just kind of blows me away. Right. I mean, you know, you, but and then, like you said, you have no choice. It's what we're paying for is the only, well, I mean, I'm short of bottled water, which is honestly all I drink now because of that. I'm so scared of it. Um, and then another thing, like you mentioned, you bathing in it. Who, 
how do we know that it's still not being absorbed? Because you don't know that much about it to know. I mean, if it's absorbed into your skin that way and affects you. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. I, I uh, uh, if, if you go on to uh, the Department of, uh, let me see, I've got the website here. It's deq.nc.gov. You, you'll see a bunch of articles on it. And, and I don't want to alarm anybody because I think that they, they're actually on it and, and are um, fighting. I, I see on June 11th they said that uh, the DEQ has filed a proposed court order against Kim Wars. And, you know, May 18th, there was a public information session about it. So I, I think that they're on it and, and that, they, that, that, that they'll stay on it. And so, you know, I don't, I don't want to alarm people because it's, it's not a, a huge issue anymore. But it was something that was a very hot topic last year. And it, and it looks like it's something that's kind of um, being nipped in the bud now. So uh, hopefully they'll stay on this company that, that's, you know, t- tainting the water. You know, I, I grew up uh, up in Mount Airy, and we had a lot of textile mills, and, and you know, the, the mills would discharge water into the, the river. So sometimes you would go down in the river uh, by, at night, and you would see the river change colors. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's disturbing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but that's that's the way that was. Uh-huh. And, and, I mean, you know, this is the, the it was the you know, 80s, and it was, it was completely different. And, and it was not bioluminescence. <laughs> right. Yeah. So cool. What did you do? What kind of events did you go to last week? Um, I didn't really make it to many events. I had some things I was taking care of at home. Um, I did do the DJ trivia last night. We had a huge turnout. It was very fun. That was great. Um, Because, of course, tour season always brings in the extras, and then I got the regulars as well. So love for any of you guys to come up and hang out and introduce yourself at Gallagher's on Wednesday nights. It starts at 7, and that is in Surf City. So if you're up that way, head up and give me a holler. Introduce yourself. Would love to meet you. Um, other than that, I'm just, just trying to... Huh, my AC is acting up, so I've been focused on that. Wow, yeah. <laughs> on top of the rain, and I've just been kind of melting. So I feel like the Wicked Witch. I'm just going to be a puddle of clothes before it's over. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, when we were having all that rain, I, I noticed it wasn't so hot. So I would have my windows open and my doors open. Uh, and, and so, but but now that the, the rain subsided, uh, what was it? Oh, it was yesterday. That was the first day that like we didn't have rain, and, and I was out in it, and I was just pouring sweat, and it was 90 degrees, super humid. So yeah, yeah, I, I bet you are miserable. Oh my gosh, just that humidity, you know. Like you said, when the rain stops, then it's in the air still. It's just like you feel it. <laughs> Yeah, I went to karaoke. Oh my goodness, that yeah. sounds fun. I hate I missed that. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, uh, I wasn't there too long because I got out there a little late. And, um, but my, my uh, I went to karaoke con, karaoke at Mad Cats, which is down near Monkey Junction, used to be Junction Pub. Mm-hmm. And I like to go, not to sing, because I can't sing, but I do like to go and watch people yeah. and hear people. And so, um, there, there was some good people watching, but I, I wasn't there too long, and then I came back home to hey, get back to a busy day. Hey, we'll have to hit that day. up together one night. I like to go, too, and I can't sing, but I do anyway, so. What's your, what's your go-to <laughs> karaoke song? Um, Bobby McGee. Oh, wow. I love me some Janis Joplin. I always do Bobby McGee. Wow. <laughs> that's definitely yeah, that's the choice. go-to. Um, but yeah, we have to do that sometime. That sounds like fun, and I've never been to that place, so that would be cool to check out a new place too. Well, it's uh, not too far from Monkey Bars. Okay, okay, I know where you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we may, we may or may not have had a few drinks there before. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's back in the day. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, I uh, karaoke Kong. Uh, it, it's hosted by DJ Demo. He's on Facebook. You can. And he does a real good job of letting you know where he is each each night. So if you just have the you know fever for the flavor of some uh, karaoke, just go to his page. Um, he's under DJ Demo, and you can see where where he's oh, going to cool. be that, that evening. And and he's got gigs on you know four or five nights a week. 
That's cool, because I have people asking me all the time, do you know where there's karaoke? And it seems like most places only do it, like, on the same night, you know? And it's usually a weeknight, and it's like, uh, does anybody do it on a weekend? And I did see someplace downtown not too long ago did it on, like, Saturday nights. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, like, the real, on their second level, they'll do it most of the time it's mm -hmm. there. Um, but I, I do have people ask me commonly, you know, is there... Or anywhere on the weekends because of course you know most of us work and don't want to be out too late during the week doing it but yeah well he's, cool. he's also i think he's looking for some new gigs so if there's anyone that has interest in um get, getting karaoke in their place you know look him up on facebook give him a call uh, it's dj demo here in wilmington and uh, karaoke kong is the name of the karaoke company and and you know I, i've been to a bunch of karaoke but one of the things that i like about his karaoke is that he tries to get it so that everyone can sing at least once because you know you have folks mm -hmm. that are that are in there who will put song after yeah. song after song so if you come in at let's say 10 o'clock there might be people with song after yeah. song after song lined up and you might not be able to get in but he does it so that if you come in and it's in a reasonable time. Like if it's one o'clock in the morning, he probably wouldn't. Right, but but right. he'll he will bump you up, and you will sing first. So sometimes, like the people who've been there, are like but I've been here, but he's like, yeah, but you've already sang like three songs. Yeah, you well, know? that's awesome because I do see that that's a problem a lot of places. Yeah, and, and so he'll put you in your first song, and then he'll rotate everybody else. So, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So I so I like that. I, I I don't like to go if I well actually I really don't sing anywhere else, but I, I will sing occasionally. At his show, but mainly I just go there to people just watch. Just to check it out. It is good people watching, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a real good time uh, doing that. Well, uh, what about uh, coming up this week? Any events that you're excited um, about? I know that they are, well, first of all, the Downtown Sundown this week is Shoot to Thrill, which is an ACDC tribute band. And, you know, I kind of I kind of like ACDC a little bit, so maybe, maybe the rain will hold out and we can check that out a little bit um then there is a um cat adoption saturday from 11 to 4 at PetSmart, um where you can adopt spayed or neutered and microchipped kitties they all need a home help those fur babies have a nice safe home so you can go out there and adopt a kitty anytime at either location of PetSmart from 11 to 4 on saturday um, and there is also, for the people who have small children, this is something that I know I have some a niece that's younger and she is absolutely loves the movie Madagascar. Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. at the Oleander location of Learning Express, they have a meet the cast of Madagascar and bring your camera and meet the characters and that kind of thing. So that would be fun for the little ones. Um, then... Sunday at 1 p.m. at Tavern Law, there is a wing cook-off. You know, I'm going to gravitate towards the food, so <laughs> that'll probably be something I do, <laughs> especially wings. Uh, but if you want to compete, you can bring your best wing recipe to compete for the title. They do have all kinds of prizes. One I know is one of the Yeti coolers, which, of course, that's a big thing everybody's loving right now. There's a 36 wing minimum to enter the cook-off, and all entries must be received by 2 p.m., but it starts at 1. So that's something that I think I might try to... I'm not going to participate in the cook-off, but I'm going to participate in the eat-off. <laughs> Have you ever uh, been to one of those before? I have been to a couple. Um, it's been a long time, though. It's not been lately. So how does it work? Usually they will have them all. They, it, they just let you test, like, one of each flavor or what have you, whoever the people are in it. This one is going to be by the vast majority vote. So I believe it's going to be the people there tasting it as well. Some of them have a... Um, just like a, a judge's panel per se. But the way they said on their advertisement was that it was going to be the majority vote. So I think that um, they're going to just let the people try them and then you get to vote on which one you like the most. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never been to one. I, I, I uh, was a judge at a chili cook-off once. Oh, yeah. But it sounds like it's a little bit different. Oh. Uh, 
now I know of course we got quite a few farmers markets in the area is there well we got some things going on with that during the week and I know I noticed yesterday that the one at Scotts Hill at the plantation there was up so apparently rain or shine they are still going on and I, I think those are pretty cool. I love my fresh vegetables and stuff much better than the ones you can get at the store. So I love to go to the farmer's markets. Um, and I know we have quite a few around town. You guys have one down at Carolina Beach on Saturday, right? Yeah, yeah. I've actually got a list here of what what uh, the farmer's market. So uh, Monday, Wrightsville Beach has a farmer's market from um, 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. and that is Monday and that is at Municipal Lane which I think is right there by the police station mm -hmm. in Wrightsville Beach. Uh, Tuesday uh, Curie Beach has theirs and that's at 105 Atlantic Avenue um, that is right down on the water and that is Tuesdays from 8 to 1 and let's see so Saturday is the Riverfront Farmers Market which yeah. is downtown that's from 8 to 1 and that's at Water Street. And then also Carolina Beach Farmer's Market is um, from 8 to 1 on, on Saturdays. And that is uh, right there at the lake. And that are that is it. So uh, And then Sunday, there's a downtown artisan market that is from 10 to 3. And I see my friend uh, Emily Martin um, down there selling things. I don't know what she's selling, but she's an artist. And she also uh, does hair but um, she, she's a phenomenal artist and draws these little monsters and, and funny things. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I bought a couple of her, her smaller pieces, and, and she's absolutely amazing. So I see her post that she's down there. So that's Sundays from 10 a.m. to 3, and that is at the uh, riverfront. And that's good to know that there's some on the weekends because I know a lot of them, like the one, of course, it's they, last week was the last week, but the one at Topsail was always on Thursdays, and then like the one in Scotts Hill at the Poplar Grove Plantation is on Wednesdays. So there's there's like that for the people, those of us that work during the day, you know, we don't get an option to go there. So I really like the fact they have them on the weekend. Um, I tried a sample of wine from a vendor and actually ended up getting a bottle at, I want to say it was Azalea Festival. And it was an orange citrus wine and it was absolute best wine I have ever tasted and the lady said she does the Carolina Beach one on Saturdays or that she would be there huh. when it started so I'm gonna have to come down your way so I can give me another bottle of that wine. Yeah, you don't remember the name of it? <laughs> I can't remember the name of it but it was so good. Um, it did not have any sort of an alcohol taste whatsoever. It was just clean, fresh, you know, just like a a citrus it was really really nice and i think that i need some more of that <laughs> so what about you frankie are you going to any events this weekend or this week so i'm really excited about the love is bald uh, fashion show that's going to be uh tomorrow which is friday and and that is uh at 105 orange street in wilmington so down toward the water and that starts at 6:30 and uh, actually it starts at 8 but the doors will open at 6 30 and you can purchase your tickets at the uh at the door for 30 dollars or you can be smart and go online at loveisbald.org and save five dollars so you'll get your tickets for 25 dollars instead of 30. and it looks like uh, they're going to you know have a silent auction uh there'll be some raffle prizes uh, there are the clothes that will be there. It looks like it's from local vendors, so that will be pretty cool. But L Love is Bald is a, is a great charity, and, and tomorrow night they'll be raising money uh, to help grant a wish for a local child that's battling cancer through the Make-A-Wish uh, Foundation uh, and the Eastern North Carolina chapter. And so pediatric cancer is just a horrible, horrible disease, and, and these children are going through things that, that, that no one should have to go through, you know, especially a child. So uh, it's, a, it's a great cause. If you've uh, got some time tomorrow, you can stop by. And I'm sure that if you can't make it, you know, that $25 will still go to a, a, a great use. And uh, so Absolutely. Again, make a donation. Stop by. Just drop it off. <laughs> yeah. And that's loveisbald.org. And, again, that's tomorrow night, which is Friday night, August 3rd. Doors open at 630. And it will start at 8. How is the market doing? 
Well, you, the the mark is, is slowing down and a little bit, not not a huge jump, but you know, I, I would probably say that homes under 175, 160, anywhere you know, in there and below are, are still flying off the shelves. But uh, I, I think in general, you know, the homes that are you know four bedrooms and three baths, like like I've said before, the, those are homes that are typically bought by people with kids and the kids are usually in school so they're not moving in september october november december they're they want to move when the kids are out of school that that's why like in march you will see just a ton of you know three and four bedroom homes being listed so that they can go under contract get closed and and in june the kids and, and the families will start moving in so the the market is slowing down just just a bit but you know i read an article this week that talked about the uh, influx or the or the building of new apartments and, and one of the things in that article and i wish i could remember where where it was but the person said that that the reason that there needs to be apartments and that we're still building so many apartments is um that well one of the reasons millennials don't want to have yards and things and they don't care as much about it and that's that's totally fine the other is that uh, that the person said that it takes 20 percent down to buy a house and and that's not true at all especially you know if you're a first-time home buyer or if you're buying in a usda or if you're a veteran so if someone tells you that you need 20 percent down to buy a house you know give me a call 910-233-0186 and we'll talk about it and there's many cases that that you would but chances are we can find you a lender that will um, help you out and be able to uh, get you in for less than that. So you know, talking about rental versus owning, that, that, that can be very tough because the, the uh, rental units in here are going up and uh, in, ter- in terms of price. So if you're paying so much on rent, so let's say $1,300 a month in rent would, would be you know, $160,000, $170,000 uh, plus mortgage, and that's just a, a general estimate of mine. It's about right. So it's about seven hundred dollars for every hundred thousand dollars that you purchase, and you know it depends on your credit and uh, the mortgage and the and the terms of, of all that. So, so you're probably looking at a you know one hundred fifty two hundred thousand dollar house, and and that's tough because those houses are the ones that are selling so quick. So and, and look, owning a home is not for everybody. There's people who are better off renting and they don't care about you know the advantages of it and then plus let's think about it you know if you're buying right now at the top of the market when are you going to be able to get that money back and Clark Howard recently said that you should not buy a home unless you plan on staying in it for about 10 years and I I almost agree with that Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why it's because you don't get your equity back by the time that you pay your realtor fee. So what, I did some math a while back, and so uh, I can get you your equity back out of your house in two to three years. And I've sold a, a couple people last year that needed to sell, had to sell, and they only owned the home two years. And it was wow. tough to get them to not lose money on it because when you, uh, especially if you get like a, a USDA loan or a VA loan where you pay no money down on it, so you start off with zero equity in the house. And there were there was a couple different people there that it was real close to get them from having to pay out of their closing. So if you are going to have to move in a couple of years or if, there's, if that's a possibility, then you might want to hold off. If you're going to be there, you know, four, five years, then you can at least... You know, so so what would make you want to have to move? Well, you might get a new job, so you might not know that you'll be taking a new job in four years. But if all your bedrooms are full with kids now and you think you might have another one in the future, then you may want to uh, hold off or, or wait till you get a, a bigger house. So it's probably not as much a big thing in your area, but up my way, we've got all the military people. And who's to say when you're going to get stationed somewhere else and you're going to have to move? So then... I know my one friend and her husband, they were transferred to Japan for four years and they leased their home. They were lucky enough that they just leased it out to someone else and rented it, you know. But, um, you know, like you said, if you're not sure if you're going to be there, but for a few years, that's a big thing in our area. There's lots of military people that may be moving. Well, well and so, so one of those people that, that I sold that had only owned it two years, he had uh, purchased it from a family member and 
had a couple of different realtors come by and they told him the most that he would get for his house was 165000 And so um, a mutual friend called me and said, hey, can you go talk to this person? I said, sure. So I went over there and I ended up selling it, had in a contract in about two weeks. And we ended up closing at one eighty seven five. So that's $22,500 more than three other realtors said that he would get for. Wow, yeah. So, uh, and I, I take a lot of pride in getting the most money for, you know, my clients for, for their homes. I, I, I don't think about the money that I'll make going into the transaction or coming out of it. So that's the market. It has been a wonderful week. I, I've, I've, had a, I've been very busy. I, I was late showing up to our appointment today because i had uh, real estate stuff going on and i've seen a couple texts come in since i've been here of other things so i've gotten three houses under contract this week and negotiated one heck of a due diligence request and it looks like we'll be closing that one next week so wow, that's super, awesome. yeah su- super super excited so uh, i think that's all i got do you have anything uh, honestly i think that's about it for me other than just making sure that everybody shares contact us all the social media Tell everybody, give us your any, any insight you might have, any questions you may have. If there's any events, locations, et cetera, that you have questions about, you'd like to see us check into or talk about, please let us know. So we're, we're easy to find. Everything in our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, it is all uh, at 910POD, so 910POD. Uh, our website is 910POD.com, and that's where you can listen to our a podcast and you know on our social media you know we're trying to, to put events on there and we're trying to talk about local things that affect uh, all of us but but we also want to hear you and what you think and what you're doing what are the events that that you're all excited about and so if you go to facebook and you type in 910 pod or what's up wilmington it will it will pull us up uh, twitter instagram same thing 910 pod and uh, if you've got any questions or if you're interested in being a sponsor on our show, which we would love to, to have some sponsors, uh, the email address 910pod, P-O-D, at gmail.com, 910pod at gmail.com. Very, very easy. Or, or you can contact us through any of our social media. It's just send us a, a DM. And speaking of sponsors, uh, who are our sponsors this week, Shannon May? I got Mermaid Kisses Photography, and they do any event, large, small, individual pictures, senior pictures, maternity photos, birthday sessions. The new thing we've done here lately that is pretty awesome is, you know, you see the the kids doing like the first, second, third birthday picture, you know, especially the first birthday where they like do the smash the cake session. Well, we've been doing some adults, and it is really, really cool to see the, you know, like, oh, like we make the sign, you know, I'm 30, I'm this tall, these are my favorite things, I have all my teeth, and rather than smashing a cake, you might be drinking from the wine bottle, you know, mm-hmm. but it's fun, it's great for everybody, so, you know, we do weddings, we, you know, even we'll come to the hospital and do births of babies so that daddy can focus on helping mom and not be worrying about trying to take some pictures. <laughs> oh, Lord. I don't know that I would be taking pictures. But that is 910 231 8609, or you can find them on Facebook under Mermaid Kisses Photography. But that is definitely something there. Um, do you have any sponsors? Uh, would you say your phone number again? 910-231-8609 is the number for the Mermaid Kisses Photography. Because I was talking over you. <laughs> uh, also, you know, we want to thank uh, Frankie Secrets Real Estate. That's me. And I, uh, I love real estate. It has been a, a life changer for me. And I, I love helping people. I, I don't think about the money that I make. I think about the, the folks that I help. And I, I've had some really, really good conversations with my clients the last couple of days. And I, I'll, I'll tell you this little story. And, and um, yesterday I was talking with one of my clients and I went over there to take some new pictures and, and just update the, the listing just a little bit. And she asked me, she, she always tells me that my the, the photographs all, all look great. And, and so she said, I've got something for you and she goes into this room and comes back out and she's you know when her husband and her were living in Belgium her husband wanted to be a photographer and so she gave me his camera 
that he bought in 1961 in Belgium. Oh, wow. That's cool. And I, I, I'm super excited. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to use it. It's all manual, no batteries. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what all these buttons and things do. But I, I'm really excited. And that really means so much to me that, that a client that I haven't even sold her house yet, you know, thinks so much of me that she would give me this gift from, you know, 1961 that her you know, husband who's since passed, you know, and I, I thought, wow, you know, I, that's very humbling to me. So I, I care more about my clients than I do myself. And, you know, I will list a house for as little as 1%. Most of the homes that I do list are for a 1% listing fee. That's what I get. We'll have to give something to the buyer's agent, and we'll talk about that when, when we get there. But, you know, I'm willing to do uh, work, you know, three times as hard for, you know, one-third of the price and I'm very thankful for the one percent that I, that I do get. And I've I've had other brokers tell me, oh, why would you why would you do that? Well, I, I do it because there's some people that really really need it. And, mm-hmm. and I've talked before about you know the people who buy homes at the height of the market, and then when they go to sell, they just kind of get hosed. And, and here's one other quick story: is, is, is one of the first people that I I, I did a one percent listing for was this lady who was. Uh, in her late 60s, early 70s, and had bought this home at the high of the market. And and so 10 years later, it was basically $21,000 less than what she paid for it. And and that 21000 comes out to be about, gosh, 20%, or I think that's right. So it, it went from the 150s down to the 130s. And so here's this lady who, in her mind, is losing $21,000. Right. And the folks that sold her the home, the folks that helped her buy it, would not give her any kind of break. And, and you know, and some people said some really mean things to her, like, hey, you just need to suck it up and stay in the house. And, and I'm just sorry. That's just not the way that we should talk to anyone, especially older folks. Right. So I got her home sold, and I sold it. And, and I, in that neighborhood, I still have the highest priced home that has sold in that neighborhood and it's been two years since then oh wow so i i am very happy to sell and i'm very happy to get results and, and there's four different neighborhoods in wilmington where i sold the highest price home so just don't believe what people say about using a discount broker that we don't get results because i can show you and prove to you that i have gotten results that that other folks who would have charged three times as much as me couldn't get so anyway, you can look me up Facebook, Frankie Seekers, Frankie Seekers Real Estate. My number is 910-233-0186. You can Google me; I'll, I'll pop right up, and um, very, very easy to find. And 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 if you're looking for me on um, social media, my handle is F Gives Back. So for Frankie Gives Back. Um, because I, I donate a lot to uh, charities. I don't have a wife and kids, so uh, I've got that freedom to, to be able to, to give a, a lot of money um, to, to charity. So I not only list homes for one-third of what the, the normal rate is, but I also uh, donate a lot to, to charity. So That's awesome. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm very, very happy and very thankful to do so. So that's Frankie Secrets Real Estate. And, um, you know, if you have any questions about real estate, even if I can't help you, uh, I'd love to talk to you and give you give you some advice and maybe point you in the right direction. So that is it for me this week. Do you have anything? I believe that's all other than, um, you know, you can find me on Facebook under Shannon Reynolds. Now it's also got Shanny, so you'll know. And Instagram, Mermaid Shanny. So either one of those you can contact on, and they are both linked as well to the 910 pod, the What's Up Wilmington for that, whichever social media it is. So you can find us that way as well. Like you said, DM any questions, um, anything that you'd like to see us talk about, anything. If anybody you know knows someone that they would like to see us interview in the area or any topics that we have not touched on that they may would like us to look into, absolutely let us know. And, and you know, one other thing that we've forgotten to mention is we would like someone who is local to provide us with some intro and outro music. Absolutely. That would be awesome. And and, and right now I, we're, we're thankful because we're using um, a band called The Glad Rags and uh, I can't remember the name of the of the tune. But, but they're called the Glad Rags, but, but they're not anyone that we know. It was uh, uh, just someone that I found online, and I, I, I love it. But, you know, we really want to um, 
try and and support local as much as possible and i know there's a ton of musicians and so if you want to um, provide some intro and outro music you you can just contact us through any of our social media and we'd love we would we would love for that and actually that's that's a big thing for us is that we we want uh, to get some local music shani loves music i love music uh, and we've got friends that are in music and and i know that sometimes they're busy so anybody that is local, if you would like to get your music on here as an intro and outro, we would love to, and we'll we'll promote your name, and and uh, you can send us your upcoming shows and whatnot, and we'll we'll help get that out there. Absolutely, just keeping it local. That was that's awesome. Yeah, that's so what we want to do. Thank you all very much for listening, and we will be back with you next week. And just check us out on social media. Absolutely, have a good weekend. Bye.